officer will preside separately and that there will be a, a, a panel of up to three administrators decide the outcome. So the intent is the hearing officer to be separate from the three panelists. So the hearing officer would not have a vote? That's the intent. Now, there, again, say for the morning of unforeseen scenarios where if you have three panelists and one may not be able to come for some unforeseen reason, you end up with two panelists plus the hearing officer. These unforeseen scenarios that may arise, um, the hearing officer could be one of the deciders in that scenario, but that's not the plan or intent. We, we probably need to work on this between first reading and second reading. Then. Okay. I welcome your feedback, Mr. Well, uh, Mr. let Shepherd. me ask this, uh, mm -hmm. Tim, uh, Mr. Shepard, what are you suggesting? <clears throat> well, the concern I've got, and, and it reads exactly the way Dr. Sauce described it, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, when I first looked at it, based on history back when we used to do it with the tribunal as opposed mm -hmm. to a hearing officer, I thought that there would be a, a person that would be designated as the hearing officer among the tribunal right. members. And, uh, and I'm actually in favor of that too. So if we have the hearing officer plus two additional, so that, be, that becomes three right there. But, but I, I wasn't suggesting that change. The concern that I had is that if something did come up at the last minute like Dr. Sauce described, if, if, this, if this policy is adopted as it is now, we don't have the option of allowing the hearing officer to participate in the decision. Why is that, Mr. Shepard? Why is your interpretation that? Because uh, it says be presided over by a hearing officer who is a separate person from the uh, three panel. tribunal panelists. The decision would be made by the up to three tribunal panelists. Mm -hmm. So under this, you could have a hearing officer who just presides over the hearing and one, two, or three panelists. But the hearing officer, the way this reads, can't participate in the, uh, in the, in the decision. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of okay, cleaning understood. up. We just need to put it in there where we could do that. Yeah, so, so Sauce, this, this would be an example of the, the, the delineation between the policy and the reg. Uh, as you've heard me say before, what we've put into policy, we adhere to it as to the letter. The reg would enable you to do that. So what Tim is, has identified, you, it's gonna be one or the other. But in the policy, it needs to be one or the other. And so if we're, if we're wanting to enable the officer to participate, we write it as such. What he's saying is if we have those circumstances, that's something that needs to be in the regulation. But if the policy doesn't allow for it, we can't do it. Does that make sense? So we'll, we'll follow that through. But it's, it's going to be a matter of just being clear in the policy. The regulation will outline what we do. But the policy needs to stipulate one or the other. And I guess I'm more interested in knowing um, how my colleagues feel about this as it relates to the hearing officer being part of the actual decision with the panel. That's fair. A question I would have for clarity is the three, up to three at the moment, mm -hmm. would they be made aware of, I'm assuming they're not sitting in on the tribunal, or are they? No, oh, they are. Yes, they sir. Are. So, so they yeah. are listening. They're, They're hearing present, everything. hearing the evidence. Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm in agreement that having the um, officer along with and not separate. Yeah. So if we could rewrite that it reads the hearing officer plus two um, additional people. So that gives you a panel of three. It, it would. Yep, it would. Yeah. Cause that can be with, done. With four, if you mm -hmm. have a split vote, then who, yeah. who makes that? Yeah. Fifth? So. Right. So if we are in agreement to that, if that could be a revision that you would have the presiding officer along with two other people that will mm -hmm. deliberate and make the decision on behalf during the tribunal hearing. Yeah, that's no problem. It's still, you're still with three, still trained, approved administrators. Yes, sir. So that'll be the language that, that I'll, I'll ask you to look for before we bring it back to you for final adoption. So, um, yes, sir, Dr. Right. Soft will be able to yep. get that language. Absolutely. And then also within... I know that we were brought forth a list last year mm -hmm. uh, at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Are they provided in this particular? 
Great question, sir. Let me speak to that. So um, I don't want to misspeak on the month. Anthony, I believe it was August that that list was brought before the board. So the way the policy is currently written, hence why we're proposing the change. Right. The way the policy is currently written, only the 10 administrators that were on that list that the board approves on an annual basis, only those 10 and nothing but those 10 are permitted to serve on a tribunal panel as the policy is written. Hence the, uh, the revisions that we're presenting changes that language from only these 10 that are approved on an annual basis to all trained GSCS administrators are eligible to serve and would, be, and would serve uh, at different times on tribunals so that it's not only those 10. Okay. So currently, Mr. Brown, before the policy is, the change is approved that the board eventually hopefully will approve, we still just have 10 and those 10 are now serving on a rotational basis in the tribunals that we've had in, in the month of January and will have in February. Okay. Is this a, this training, mm -hmm. is this something that is a certificate that is done and is yeah. it done on a state level or is that done locally? How is, how is that training done? Yeah, yes, sir. There, it, it's training that's provided uh, every year. Uh, Ms. Jimmy Stokes is a gentleman's name uh, who trains administrators around the state. There is a certification that's provided each administrator upon completion. And there's an annual renewal that's required. So um, the initial training is like half a day, and then each year the annual renewal is like an hour or something, an hour and a half, something like that. And I just want to make sure that, you know, from the people that we have and how they are selected, that it just reflects, you know, the student body that we service here in our district. I agree. Totally uh, support that notion, Mr. Brown. And that's one of the reasons why we're bringing forward this change so that it, it can be just that, give us more ability to do so. Ooh, we started this. Madam so Chair, one, one suggestion to Dr. Sauls, when you're redrafting this, mm -hmm. I would put that you would have up to three panelists, mm -hmm. one of whom would be designated as the hearing officer to preside over the hearing. And the reason I'm saying put up to is if something last minute happens and we end up having to try it with two panel members, yep. We need yeah. to have that option. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Understand, agreed, and just for the sake of the board's benefit, <clears throat> remember there's statute language about timing of when a tribunal has to happen. So God forbid if you have a panelist who has that unforeseen accident on the way to school or some urgent matter at their school and they can't get away, um, you don't want to put the board in a, the district in a position rather where you're out of statute, you're out of compliance mm -hmm. because the policy is written that you can't have two panelists instead of three or uh, there needs to be some flexibility in that regard. So yes, understood, and that's a good suggestion, Mr. Shepard. And what I would like, mm -hmm. because he is our board attorney, if we could just shoot it over before the um, second read, we could just shoot it over to the board attorney yep. to, to take a look at it. No problem. Uh, Thank you for the suggestion. Ma Madam Chair, uh, I, I want to ask Dr. Saucer yes, a question. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, aside from th this uh, policy that we just discussed, Sure. Uh, someone, someone asked me this question, and I figured this would be the best time to just mm -hmm. get some clarification. Someone else may be in the same situation, but mm -hmm. I was asked, uh, <clears throat> what do we do with students who have aged out of the public school system and they haven't yet acquired their high school diploma? What, what do we do? And, and specifically, this person was asking about someone that was in the DFAC system. There's a ton of implications possibly, so I, uh, you know, I, 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 it would help if I knew more about the circumstances and perhaps maybe you might be able to connect me with the family and we can get the right answer depending on their circumstances. But the answer could look different depending on a number of different factors, Mr. Holmes. So maybe you might be able to, um, give me a little more specifics offline of uh, who the family is or what their needs are and we can okay. help get them the right answer. Okay. Now, there's right. a lot of ways that question could be answered depending on a whole host of factors involving the student circumstances, prior history, academic progress, uh, you know, behavioral successes or challenges or lack thereof. Okay. So I hope that's okay if I, we go Yeah, that's fine. Right. I, I get you with you asking. offline and, yep. and, and, uh, and we, we'll get, sure. get you in contact with sure. the specific family. Sure. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Question. Yep. Appreciate the feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sauls. All right, board members, you have your information items, the monthly facilities and maintenance report, the construction renovation progress summary, and then the federal grant budgets update from Ms. Alston.
Yes, um, and for point of reference, the, our green, the updated um, agenda included the um, information memorandum for Ms. Austin. We appreciate that. Is she here? Thank you, Ms. Austin. Questions or comments? All right, we do, uh, with no further business, we do have an, uh, to go into executive session. Did I miss something? No. No? Okay. We do have an item to go into executive session to discuss or deliberate upon the employment of personnel. Do I have a motion? So sure. moved. Second. All right. Mr. Doss and Mr. Holmes second the motion. All right. Well, all all in favor? In favor? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. All right. We'll adjourn to executive session. Thank you all for coming today. Appreciate what you do for us. And uh, let us know how we can help. Thank you. <laughs>